Hey guys, what's up? It's Kay Jones here and I'm going to be coming at you with another video on what a degree in a BBA, Bachelor of Business Administration with Finance, a specialization in finance, consists of. So a lot of y'all think that I am a cybersecurity major, which I was, and I'm currently seven classes away from graduating in cybersecurity. And yes, I've taken... I think three programming courses and that was the primary reason why I switched is I did not enjoy programming it was a rip out your hair type of ordeal um, it was difficult and challenging however I may go back and finish that that being said though I'm currently graduating in finance in December with four classes left and they're all my capstones this is on an undergraduate perspective here. I'm not giving a graduate level in finance. I'm not giving a doctorate. I'm just telling you what finance is, what you're going to learn in the undergraduate level, and what kind of jobs are out there. So a lot, and I'm making this video because a lot of the people who are on my channel or college students, they're people coming out of high school, or they're adults who are older with kids and who want to go back and get their degree, or you're just simply curious and you've already got your degree in nursing or what have you not and don't know what I, my degree is in. So for those of you who think finance, economics, and accounting are the same, I'm going to simply point out the differences. So those are the three probably biggest business majors besides business management, which that's, I'm just going to leave that out. But accounting more records the past and historical information about the company with balance sheets, you know, income statements, etc. So it all records it for the past to be kept on file while finance looks more toward the future. So with finance, you are wanting to make sure that your company takes the least amount of risk in the future. Your company is taking the least amount of cost and that you're going to get the highest return on your investments. Now investments can be a broad range of things. Economics is more on a macro or micro scale. So if it's on a macro scale, you're looking more into economic research for the government and things like that. When on a micro scale, it's going more on the industry or maybe even a company and it's more of research on supply and demand, elasticities, etc. I don't have my degree in economics. I've only taken two classes on it. I don't, I'm not too into the graphs type ordeal. I'm more into the finance. And so what finance, a finance undergrad degree consists of is you're gonna be talking about, about stocks, bonds, um, derivatives, options, which some types of options are derivatives. That kind of is something that gets more in depth. You're also gonna be talking about risk and return, um, investments, uh, portfolios, how to diversify a portfolio to get the, um, to basically diversify your risk, things like that. And some of y'all are like, what is this girl talking about? Don't worry. Something that you can learn a lot of these topics on to see if you're interested in it is the Wall Street Journal. So it is a paid subscription, but if you think that you may be interested in finance and you're being sincere about it, you can go ahead and check out the Wall Street Journal um, and read some information on, it will mention derivatives and stocks and you will slowly learn those things. So that being selling, said, I said selling, <laughs> finance is on a broad topic. Every, not broad, every business, has a financial sector. So you have financial financial analysts, financial managers, financial administrators, um, financial investors. Gosh, there's so many. And then, then you just have the general business and financial assistance. I mean, it goes to a very broad, I mean, not a broad, broad is not the word. There's a lot of different sections in finance. That being said, um, it's, it's, I found it specifically interesting because stocks and bonds, stocks, you know, were in, you're invested basically as a stakeholder or stockholder in a company and you get a return as a dividend. And I always thought that was really fascinating, which is on a corporate level. And then you have where you have bonds where you're giving a uh, company debt and saying, hey, pay me back so you can pay off your loans, what have you not. That's a very easy ex explanation of the two. You're going to be studying more in depth about these, you know, 
uh, the present value, future value, your discount values, etc. And it goes really in depth about that at the undergraduate level, only to a certain extent, and then you get to the graduate and then your PhD. There absolutely are a lot of jobs in finance. However, it's very competitive. You're going to need to have an internship. You're going to have to have a good GPA. A lot of people in finance, when I tell them I'm getting a finance major, they're like, oh, you must be good at numbers. Yes and no. Um, I'm good at numbers in Excel. <laughs> you also take classes like computer moduling, which you should be taking a class on Excel because a lot of finance and collaborating your numbers and looking at betas and things like that, you need to be able to formulate that in Excel. Uh, look, comparing the mar uh, a company to the S&P 500, which is a, basically a type of um, yeah, stock uh, with fi Fortune 500 companies. So that being said, a lot of people learn, you can learn all of this stuff on your free time. Okay, you don't have to have an education. What the degree says is, hey, you went to classes, you did projects, you worked with other people, you did, you took tests, you studied, you took the initiative to really take the time to learn the subject. Whereas if you learn it on your own, there's no proof. It's just, hey, let me talk about it. You know, so it's, I personally think finance is extremely interesting. Uh, it is, I mean, it's a little bit more than just business management. You do focus on management strategy, but it's more in the financial sector. Um, I do, I personally thought it was way more interesting than network security, telecommunications, or programming. Uh, however, that being said, the financial industry is at a risk. You know, now technology is growing to an insane degree, and the auto, automotive, I think, is industry you know we're gonna have robots taking over people's jobs I'm pretty sure in the next 60 years so that being said if you're going to invest in a degree and you're going to spend money on a degree your time your patience your 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 mind everything you have to study at an undergraduate level it's not colleges or university I should say it depends on the country and university you have to be committed okay it's okay to change your major a couple times, but think about it and be careful because you're going to lose money. That being said, this is in the United States, by the way. I don't know how it is overseas. And I changed my major once from cyber to finance, and I still am considering going back and finishing my cyber because money has been spent into it and time investment. Um, also, the programming was not a waste of my money because there is people in finance that actually program certain types of things on computers to help uh, formulate future risk and returns. It's like um, basically a simulation that they create, etc. Uh, that's what you're going to see in finance. If you didn't even know what I just said, it was like, okay, this woman is saying words I don't even understand. Best recommendation is to read the Wall Street Journal, watch some documentaries, see if this type of topic interests you. Uh, it's rapidly evolving. Unlike if you get a degree in cyber, computer science, anything like that, you're going to be secured to a job because technology is increasing at a, a super fast pace where finance has always stayed the same, but the technology has grown within it, if that makes sense. So you have to be careful. If it's something you really love and you enjoy, um, go for it. You're going to have to take some classes in statistics though because that I took three statistics classes because that's going to be involved in finance. You're going to have to take economics. You're going to have to take three accounting courses which are awful. Um, you don't just purely take finance and of course in college you have to or university you have to take your core curriculums such as your sciences, your your history, etc. So I just wanted to do this video on what a bachelor a business <laughs> a BBA in finance consists of what you can expect why I chose it I just find it very interesting and pa I'm passionate about it which I think is so important if you're going to work in a career field in it uh, that being said I hope this helped y'all kind of know what it is and if you're interested in it gave you some more insight if you like this video please feel free to give it a thumbs up and you feel likely to or feel free to subscribe to my channel also 
I have some people asking for more cyber uh, videos. I'm willing to do that, however, I will be completely honest. I am not as good at cybersecurity as other topics. I, I took, I think, a total of six classes. I have, like I said, seven classes till I graduate. There's still a lot that I don't know, and even at an undergraduate level, cybersecurity is such an in-depth thing. You can go from, uh, you know, if you're wanting me to make a video on what kind of career that you can go in from a cybersecurity degree, I can probably do that. But talking, I do have a video on that on my channel of what I've learned so far and what you can expect getting a cyber degree. That being said, I am graduating in December, huzzah, with a financial degree. And uh, you learned a little bit about me from this video. Uh, and also, I hope this video helped you. So good luck and thanks for watching.